Time we talk about something. This is the story of the bigger picture. Evan, welcome to exile. The deeper mystery of faith. This is the story of God's mission in the world and our place in it. I'm Evan. Hi, I'm Evan. These are my friends. Evan, what's going on? And this is for the life of the world. Letters to the Exiles. Okay, so the next few minutes could get a little confusing. So I just want to tell you in advance, hang in there with me. It'll totally be worth it. Do I know you? I don't think so. Okay, interesting. First word we're going to talk about today is anamnesis. Remember when we said God's oikonomia, his economy of all things, was like the music we play in our various economies? Well, here's the question, okay. How do we remember that music? Okay, it seems to me that there are two ways we can remember. Both are important, but one of them especially so. So, let's have some music, shall we? One, two, three, four. Right. This is one way that we remember, okay? Music, we write it down, we note it, we put pen to paper. This is how we remember things. But anamnesis is a little different, okay? Anamnesis, we enter into the memory. We live it, we play it. One, two, three, four. Okay. Anamnesis is a memory that is a lived memory. It's the same kind of memory that God asked of the Israelites during the first Passover. It's the same kind of memory that Jesus asked the disciples when he said, do this in remembrance of me, okay? It's a keeping alive of God's song. It's a keeping alive of his promises. And it's not something that, you know, you hold on to in your head. It's not something that you just preach from your pulpits. And it's not something that you write in your blogs. Okay, this is something that you live in love and creative service with order and wisdom and wonder. You don't let it die on the page, okay? You play it. Okay, stop. So that's one word, anamnesis, anamnesis. It means lived memory. Got it? Good. Now hold on to your pants. We're moving on. And here's what's kind of interesting. It's that second word I want to tell you about, prolepsis. Two, three, four. <laughs> What is prolepsis? Well, let's start with an acorn. Even when an acorn is an acorn, you could say that the whole future of the oak tree is present in the now of this acorn. What the oak tree will be is somehow already here in the acorn that is. This is prolepsis. Present is the yet to be unwrapped the gift of mystery of future days that all can see unfolding in the now. What in the future of my eyes, present now, what does by? May I say the group is nigh, coming not yet now. Another way to think of it is this way. Think of a book. As you read the book and are in the story, the book has a past, a present, and a future. What has happened already, you know. What has happened in the present, you're learning. How the story ends in the future, this is mysterious. But if you think of the book as a whole, all the events in one sense are all present at once, all in the now. The present is the yet to be unwrapped, the gift of mystery of future. 
future days that all can see unfolding in the now. But in the future, my eyes, present now, we're just fighting. And I say the gloom is dying, coming not yet now, not yet now. Let's have one more example. And this one is my favorite. Remember when we were here? Or here? Remember this scene? At that time, you didn't realize it. But you were already participating in the end of this series. When you thought we were just going about the business of the day. At that time, you were moving toward the conclusion of this series. And at the same time, without knowing it, you were participating in its final episode. But that then? When we were here? When we were here. Is actually the now, is actually the end. And back then, when it was now, it was the future already in the present. It is the foreshadow of that not yet mysteriously present in the now. That's prolepsis. Present is the yet to be unwrapped, the gifted mystery of future days that all can see unfolding in the now. But in the future, by and by, it's present now, we're just fighting. And I say the gloom is dying, coming not yet now, not yet now. Anamnesis, the lived memory. Prolepsis, the not yet now. What does this have to do with church? Ladies and gentlemen, one last time, Dr. Stephen Grable. So it all comes down to this. Forget all the pageantry, forget all the gimmicks, forget all of the bells and whistles surrounding this place and this series. If you'd leave with nothing else, leave with this one thought. The church is the body of Christ, given as a gift for the life of the world. Let me say it again. The church is the body of Christ given as a gift for the life of the world. The church maintains the hope of the not yet by living the kingdom now. Not in our ideas or in our talk. What kind of tree is this? Or in our videos, but in our actions in the world. <laughs> we are to be the hope of God scattered throughout the world. And we maintain this hope by gathering. And when we speak of anamnesis in the church, we mean the church is the lived memory of God's purposes in the world. The church is called to be the very embodiment of the hope of the kingdom to come we are the body of Christ in the world. Dear everybody, what do we know about Christ's body? It was beaten and bruised and offered as a gift for the life of the world. And this is where another mystery is revealed. In living this way, not only are we the body of Christ, not only are we preparing the way of the Lord into the world of exile, but we are preparing ourselves for Him, the way the virgins prepared the way for the bridegroom. Because at the end of all things, where does this all lead? What does this all look like when God pours Himself out for us? and we offer ourselves back to him. It looks like a marriage feast. It looks like a party. This is the mission of the church and the people of God. This is our song of Zion, remembering, living, and rejoicing in the hope that is to come. This is our song, and this 
is our prayer. As the church, we are a family, one that speaks to God and our destiny from a point of exile. And we speak from a posture of awe and praise, not only for that time to come, but for this very moment. We are called to abide in God and say, let it be to his plan and our part in his divine and wondrous mystery. We can be assured that God's desire for our work here is intimately related to his plan for all things. God will sustain us, for our work is a mighty collaboration, not only with our Creator, but the entire world. In this broken world, we have a responsibility to bring healing and harmony to our most immediate surroundings and work outward. By these actions, we too are healed. As our calling is great, may we not be enamored by our abilities or fall in love with the fruit of our labor. We must seek God's grace and seek to orient our work toward communion with Him. As a church, as Christ's body offered to the Father, we return it to Him. It is His. Everything we have and everything we are forever and ever. Amen. Let's get to it. It's bone.
to be held, to be loved. Though I've lost all of you, I know the roses will bloom for this ghost in the moon.